tricky case of uh, bilateral anterior uveitis this patient came to us with a completely fibrotic plastic pupil which was non dilating and the similar situation in the abdomen there is a complete adhesion of the rs posteriorly to the total anterior capsule and the rs being very very rigid and plastic using rs hooks would have probably caused cheese wiring and a tear complete tear of the rs and distortion of the pupil so we decided to go ahead using the bx expander designed and invented by my friend dr suvin bhattacharya now the trick here is that first of all you need to stain the posterior capsule so we found a space between the pupil and pushed in small amount of uh, trypan blue dye but making sure not to over pressurize then we tear the fibrotic adhesions which are between the pupillary border and the capsule this will give us some help in order to help dilate the pupil size now we break the adhesions being very very careful not to damage the anterior capsule and also not to encroach on the zonular area so you will notice me breaking the adhesions of this plastic pupil and you can actually see how rigid and plasticky the pupil and the complete iris is the moment you put viscoelastic within a few seconds it comes back to its normal shape now these fibrotic patches behind the iris are making it rigid and plastic and as discussed earlier using a uh, iris hook in this situation would have been tricky so we use the stretch technique pupilloplasty using a lester's manipulator and a y rotator to create the tear of the sphincter and break the fibrotic band now you will realize that is successful to some extent at least now we have the broken fibrotic band of the sphincter complete release of the posterior surface of the iris from the anterior capsule now we proceed to take out the b hex pupil expander the trick here is to completely insert the pupil expander inside the eye before you start engaging it into the iris now this is actually a contraindication for a bx expander bx expander is not usually used for plastic pupils because it cannot sustain to be engaged very easily but we will show it here again that how beautifully this bx expander though takes some time and effort and skill but makes us do this particular surgery now you will notice every time i negotiate to put in the expander and engage it into the pupil the other part of the expander comes out so i decide that i will try and engage at least one segment of the expander bang opposite to the incision and you will see what happens. the moment i engage it i release it it is pushed so i decide to actually engage the small little hole of the pupil expander hold that so i use a sinski's hook to engage that small little keyhole into the pupil expander and align it so that that pupil that hole small little keyhole gives me a better grip so that i can push the pupil expander behind the iris i push it behind the iris engage it but see what happens the moment i go from the opposite side to hold the key keyhole opening of the pupil expander the initial area where i had that managed to engage comes out so this is exactly what i mean by using a bx expander in a plastic pupil is very very tricky and usually is not successful but nevertheless we will not give up we engage another sector and you will realize when we engage another sector the first sector of the expander is disengaged again but luckily for me i am able to engage one complete sector and other sector as half now at least i have some secure stability of my expander now i actually need to really pull the pupil expander here you will realize the flexibility of this beautiful piece of engineering that it doesn't break and it still manages to give me what i want now i have a nearly 5 mm of pupil opening now we will proceed to do capsular axis 
Now, doing a capsule rexis in such a fibrotic anterior capsule is not going to be an easy game. But luckily, I did and I was able to manage to stain the anterior capsule initially in the first step itself. Needle capsulotomy is not working here. So, I use the forceps to do and complete the capsule rexis. I am using Dr. Swa Saldipurkar's capsule rexis forceps here. No commercial interest. Now you will see that the fibrotic band of capsule is giving me a lot of trouble to complete the capsule rexis and it has a tendency to run out. Nevertheless, we will manage to complete the capsule rexis using a different style of forceps. Now I want to enlarge the capsule rexis to a larger size. So I do a spiral capsule rexis and create a larger opening. Now the next issue is the sticky cataract. The cataract is so sticky and you please do notice the prolapsing iris. So since it's a fibrotic iris, it's a floppy iris, it will keep protruding out of the wound. No amount of hydrodissection or hydrodelineation is working in this particular capsule. So I decide to use a bimanual rotation technique again using a Sinsky hook with a Lester's manipulator. I do manage to rotate it slightly. I do use a coupling rotatory torque forceps. But you will notice in spite of so much of manipulation, the pupil expander ring is not giving way and is still holding its place, keeping that tough rigid pupil well dilated for me. So I will fast forward the video. This again, removing this cataract was not easy. It was totally sticky and stuck to the total capsular walls, even to the posterior capsule. But nevertheless, somehow we did manage to complete the case. Now, I am fast forwarding the other steps of the surgery because they are not relevant to this particular topic of the video, where I am actually discussing about the use of the B-hex pupil expander. Now, you will notice we managed to clean the whole cortex using the left hand to actually make visualization better. Now we put in viscoelastic and then make sure that the aisle implanted is dialed in very carefully because sometimes while dialing this lens, you can disengage the pupil expander which can get caught behind the eye. Sorry for the decentration here. Now, how to remove the pupil expander in such a case? You remove it similarly by disengaging the flange right in front of your wound from the iris. Disengage it, pull it, leave it on top of the iris. Then disengage the second segment, leave it on top of the iris. And after you disengage two, it's very easy to pull the peeling segment slowly out of the wound to the same port. Again, it got engaged while being pulled out because of the floppy iris which was entangled with the pupil expander as we were coming out. Now, even when removing viscoelastic here, you can see the pupil distortion is not very significant. But I am sure if we had used iris hooks for this case, the situation would have been very different with complete tear or cheese wiring of this iris and could have caused problems for this patient. Now, we remove the viscoelastic. Even while removing the viscoelastic, we have to ensure that the iris prolapse is taken care of. So, we reduce the bottle height. I am removing complete viscoelastic. Removing viscoelastic in post cases is very, very important because these eyes have a tendency for inflammation because of previous history of uveitis. Now, we hydrate the wound and you can see that the pupil is now not exactly round but not much distorted. Cataract surgery is over and this patient did very, very well and regained 6-12 vision unaided and was very happy with the surgery. Thank you.